Good morning, my beloved. Kalimera says. I know you've heard, I've heard all my life. Well, it was a coincidence, and it is a coincidence that this took place or that took place. And I guess in my, um, in my moments of not really thinking too hard about it, okay, yeah, it's, it's a coincidence. But when we really start looking at something, when we start examining something, we see that there really aren't that many coincidences, if indeed there are any coincidences in our world. There's a rhyme and reason. There is, there is a God, even though at times I think that He has turned His back on us, He still is there. I say that I think He turned His back on us, not because He ever has, it's because I can't see it. It's because I, in my stubbornness, in my egotism, in my self-pride, and my self-eludedness, I think that God walks away from me. Never. I am the one who walks away from God. Example, today's gospel lesson. All of that to say today's gospel lesson? Yes, absolutely. This is a really very important, significant, and on point gospel for our world today. All we have to do is just open our eyes just for a very small amount of time to see what is happening all around us. What is going on? Not in our parish only, not in our state only, not in our country only, but on our planet, on the whole earth. Confusion, chaos, self-absorbedness, And then we hear the gospel lesson this morning. It's kind of like a shake-up, a wake-up call. You might remember that it's taken from the sixth chapter of Matthew, certainly, and it's talking about something very pertinent, about my egotism. It starts out by saying, that the eye is the lamp of the body. In other words, keep your senses aware. Keep your senses, we have five. Keep your senses, especially the sense of sight, which is among the most powerful. Be careful what you have in you. Be careful of where your heart is. If there is light in you, then you will see light. If there is darkness in you, then there is a lot of darkness all around you, me, us. And then he goes on to the next paragraph or the next verse, talking about how it is impossible to serve two masters. In other words, if you're serving one, if you're serving the world and the master of this world and thinking only of this world, then you can't be thinking about the next world. You can't be thinking about God and the part He plays in our lives simply because we're concentrating on this world. That's the meaning in that area. And then he goes on, Matthew, the, the uh, evangelist, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, but you shall eat, drink, your body, what you shall put on, and he goes on and enumerates all of these things. He's trying to tell me that in my anxious moments, in my worried moments, and there are a number of them in my life, and I'm sure in our lives, who of us does not have some anxiety? Who of us 
does not have some anxious feeling going on. Who of us is not thinking about something in my family, something going on with me, maybe it has something to do with my school, maybe it has something to do with my work or my, my life. Where am I going? What am I going to do? It's very hard not to think about those things because this is where we're living. We get it. God gets it, understands it. He is not telling me, he is not telling me, don't go to work, if I'm looking for that excuse. He is not telling me to ignore my responsibilities to those around me. He is not telling me not to try to take care of my family. He is not telling me to ignore things, responsibilities that I have on this earth. Δεν μου λέει πουθενά στην Αγία Γραφή άφησέ το όλα αυτά που έχετε σε αυτόν τον κόσμο. Δεν βαριέσαι, όλα αυτά θα μείνουν πίσω σου. Everything that you have, everything we have, my excuse is, well, everything's going to be left behind anyway. Absolutely right. We've heard the old adage, we've heard the old saying that we have never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. It's going to stay here. But we still have responsibilities here. And later in the ver in the uh, pericope in the lesson, it says, for the Gentiles will and do seek after all these things. In other words, those people that are not aware of God. These people, he says, are seeking only after the worldly concerns. And the Gentiles seek all these things. And he continues, and he says something very important, what we just said. Your heavenly Father knows what you need, and he knows and he will give you those needs. But he also, God, also wants me not to be so concentrating on this world that I forget about the next world. And this is what is happening to us. We are so involved in the world, so involved in having involved in having my way. I want it this way. My goodness, our politics in our in our country, and it's not just our country, it's all over the world again. Our politics, we're so stinking divided. Because I want my way. Well I want my way. No, I want my way. The point is, in our looking only, in my looking only in my way, I have totally turned my back on others that may have some other needs that I might be able to help in. We have heard before how many times God uses us, us, to try to help other people. I'm not saying that everybody's going to be a... Uh, 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 Mother Teresa, nor should everyone think that he or she is going to turn into a Mother Teresa. She had a very specific vocation and calling. I'm a human being. I have a family. I have responsibilities. I have a job. I have this, that, and the other. I have school to go to, I, whatever it is. All of these things. God is preparing each of us to do certain things. Some of us know what that is and are maybe doing it, I hope. Some of us are still waiting to find it, what it is that God is telling us to do, whatever that may be. And we do, again, have to keep our minds here also, but not to the point of exclusion of who and what God is and who and what I should be doing there also my anxiety level should not be to the point that I can't think of anything beyond me right here and now. Easier said than done. 
I get it. I am also very liable to get into that frame of mind. I'm saying this also today, my beloved, because uh, recently, in talking with some clergy friends of mine, uh, Orthodox clergy, I was attending this past week, I attended uh, a, uh, the Clergy Lady Conference in Florida, and this is held every other year. And in talking with them, we were sharing things going on in our parishes, etc., and how in the world what is going on with our, with our young people, with our youth, and the problems that our youth are facing. Well, we're turning it around. It's not just our youth. We, adults, are maybe even setting the stage for where they are. If they see me anxious, if they see me worried, if they, meet, if they see me so preoccupied with things, what is my child or my grandchild going to be, hap going to be thinking? Evidently, it's not just St. George Greenville. This is all over, at least the southeastern U.S., because that's who was represented, all of our southeastern U.S. parishes. Our youth are very, very much involved, as we know, with, for example, social media. Well, guess what? It's not just this, the children. Social media. Many of you know that I am, I call myself a dinosaur in the world of high tech. I don't know how to do a lot of the things that technology is giving us an opportunity to do. For example, I have a telephone to keep in touch with immediate, with my, with my office, with my church, my, my, my parish, with immediate parish here, and uh, to keep my schedule on it, though I have to go back to the schedule on Amy's desk to find out the true schedule. Um, I don't know how, and I haven't learned how, and I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty glad I haven't gotten on social media. I don't know how to get on Facebook. I have never gotten on Facebook. I don't know how to do it how to, and that's because, not because I, I am so careful, I'm not smart enough to get on there. Okay, if I have to, if I want to get on my remote with my TV at home, I have to ask one of my grandchildren how to get the, the remote to do this or that or the other. That's it. But my point is that our children, and I think us, we adults, have let our social media dictate, guide us, direct us on what our lives on this earth should be like. What am I talking about? How many times I have heard our children, and evidently, unfortunately, I'm not by myself, as my fellow clergy shared with me. The kids are coming up to them and asking them all kinds of different things. And why can't we have this? Why can't we have that? Why can't my life be wonderful like this other person is? This person is going to the other end of the earth on a vacation trip. We're sitting here at home fanning ourselves in front of the air conditioner. Why can't my life be wonderful like that? Why can't my life be happy? Why can't, we, why can't we have all these wonderful things that are around us like everybody else has? Well, with all due respect, with all due respect, why is it that I have to, excuse my words, brag to everybody else how wonderful my life is? Maybe, maybe I'm really not that happy either. And maybe I'm trying to convince you that I'm that happy, that my life is that satisfying. Maybe I don't want you to know 
that I'm having problems. Maybe I don't want you to know that I'm having issues with this or with that because I don't want people to know that I'm miserable. Okay, I get that. But at the same time, why am I having to convince you that I'm a lot better off than I am? Why? And you're trying to do the same for me by putting social media there. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I've got this, I've got that. So we're playing the game, both sides, not truthful. And so we get each other worked up. Why can't I take this wonderful vacation when all these other people, and that we, we do hyperbole. You know what a hyperbole is? A word that is, that is talking, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking as a linguist here, I'm not a linguist or an expert in English by any means, but hyperboles are used like, uh, when I say everything, never, always, that's a hyperbole. You never come to see me. I always have to come and see you. You never give me a compliment. I always give you a, that, those are hyperboles. And it's dangerous when we use hyperboles, and most of us do, especially if we're trying to make a point. The, the issue here is that none of us have a perfect life. None of us have a perfect family. None of us has a perfect marriage. We're human beings in a militant world. Militant means there is a battle going on. And this battle is going on all around us. And don't ever doubt that there is also a devil. Don't ever doubt that he will hit me where I am weakest. And so if I'm dissatisfied, if I'm upset, if I am disenchanted with what is going on in my life at this particular point in my life or whenever, believe that the devil is going to play that up and he's going to pull me and say, oh, what's the matter with you? Look at all these other things. The point he wants me to be discouraged with myself to the point that I do give up. And I start asking then, where are you, God? Why have you turned your back on me? I am the one who's being played. I am the one who is being manipulated. Don't fall for that, today's gospel lesson is telling me, among other things. Don't be so concentrated on just the here and now that you can't look up and you see some other good things that are going on in your life. You are alive. You have a God who loves you very, very much. You have a God who cares, a God who blesses, a God who's waiting for you to see some of these things that are going on in your life, in my life, and to remind myself that I do have this, this, and this. I have a house, I have a roof over my head, I have clothes on my back, things specifically mentioned in here today. I have food on my table, thank God. So I have blessings, I have people who love me, I have people who care, I have people who, who say they like to be around me every once in a while. So I have blessings. I need to be reminded of that. I need to remind myself of that. O Theos ini mekalos, ki mu dini panda. My God is great, and He gives me so much. If I could go on, I'm picking on Facebook, if I could go on Facebook, I don't think I want to. I'm not telling you not to. 
I'm just saying, I've got enough distractions on this earth in my life daily where I don't need to look at other distractions. If I want to be entertained and I go into opening social media, whatever, to be entertained, that's one thing. But if I'm going to social media to be instructed, to be inspired, to be guided, really? I'm supposed to be a little bit smarter than that. Be careful. That's what the lesson is today. Be careful. Yes, we live in this world. Yes, we have a responsibility to do things in this world. Yes, I have a responsibility to pay my taxes. I have a responsibility to follow the laws. All of these things. Because we're also living here. But I also have an opportunity to see the many blessings, blessings God has and does give me on a regular basis. Don't be fooled into thinking that the grass, the grass is greener, always greener, hyperbole. Always greener on the other side? No. I have to realize where I am right now is a very good place. If I want to make some changes in my life, I can do that. I can get off my rear end and I can do some things that need to be done. Good. But don't think it's going to be given to me and don't expect it to be given to me. All of these things the Gentiles, those who don't have a God, in other words, in that context, seek all of these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all, he says. But seek first his kingdom. Seek God first. Make him the priority in your life. I have to make him the priority in my life. And all these things will be yours as well. I don't have to give these things up. I have to remember the priority. This is our world that we're living in. That there's another one also. Thank you for your patience. Amen.